Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I keep getting asked if you're gonna do the bare minimum for an application funnel, you need a sales video, and what do you talk about, right? Well, you can't just slap up any video there. It's gonna be garbage. What you need to have is some type of system, some type of structure. So what I wanna go over today is the fundamental proven stories that have been tried and tested for millennia, right? There's certain stories that if you can tell, you can relate to your potential client, they can relate to you, and you can start to build a connection, build a bond that will lead to a closed deal when the time comes to ask for the sale, okay? So we're gonna go over, I'm gonna go over a whole bunch of them, and then I'm gonna go in depth on some of my favorite. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, hold on, we gotta get the right page up here. There we go, okay. So, storytelling options. There's 10 options. These are the ones that I constantly go to. So if I'm doing a social media page, if I'm doing a application video, if I'm trying to write an email, these are the stories that I'm jumping to first, right? 10 of them, the epiphany moment, right? This was the moment when I learned X. Throwing walk, rocks, they're doing this wrong, we're doing this right, here's why. Client success stories, these are fantastic. These are testimonials. You could do this all day if you have a lot of clients. Biggest mistakes stories, not only maybe your client's biggest mistakes, but your biggest mistakes. People wanna know that you're real. People wanna know that you've made, you have flaws, you've made mistakes. That's what they relate to. Short tutorial, how to do this, want me to do it for you. Go over that in a second. Authority hijacking. This person said this, here's how it applies to you, all right? Second stage tip, how to do this, but first you need this. That is huge if you're trying to give away a lead magnet or something like that. Objection handling stories. I would love to, but I'm going to go over that. The new opportunity, introducing a new way to get results, and identity shift stories. Change their habits at the core. So let's first go over the epiphany moment because I use it quite a bit. And I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can really see this. Whoa. All right. The epiphany moment, the old life. This is the process, right? So if, if you're going to sit down and write a story, and you don't have to do a, a crazy amount of story writing, but at least have a, a concept, an idea, and this is why I have these here. So the epiphany moment, your old life, right? This is the way I used to do things. This is the way I used to train dogs. And then there was a crisis. I ran into a situation with the skill set I had. I couldn't solve this problem. So I started to dive into books. I started to learn. I was on a pursuit to solve this problem. And I hit a roadblock everywhere I looked. Every resource I had didn't work. I then had this epiphany. Well, what if instead of looking at old dog training books, I started looking at other animal books? And I learned about clicker training and horse riding and all this other stuff. Now the epiphany comes and I have this new outlook on life. And then the proof. You show what you're capable of doing. So if you're a dog trainer and you used to use an old style and you found a new style, that would be perfect for you. This is going to resonate with people who have had a dog 10 years ago. They did training 10, 15 years ago. Now they got a new dog and they don't remember what to do. Or they feel embarrassed because the methods that were accepted back then aren't accepted anymore and they don't know how to change it. So that's a great one. Let's go to one of my other favorites. Biggest mistakes. All right, avoid this mistake. So it's a, a PSA, a public service announcement. This is great for social media. Hey, avoid this mistake. Ba -da 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 -da. Here's why. If you do this, this is going to be the result of it. What you want to do is this instead. Here's why. And then the proof that it works. The proof that it works usually comes throughout the entire story. But you want to make sure that you've built up the authority and show you're, you're not just smoking in mirrors, right? You're like, hey, this actually works. This is why I'm telling you to do it. The only big issue with this is if you don't take the responsibility for the mistake in the beginning, people will think you're just trying to be uh, an authoritative dictator. Right? They want to know that you made the mistake at some point. Hey, I wish I knew this sooner. Hey, I made this mistake and it cost me thousands. Here's how you can avoid it. That kind of thing, right? You don't want to go, you need to do this, or you have to do this, or this is what you should do. What you're telling them is, we're not on the same page. I'm better than you. I want to send you, uh, you know, I want to make you do my way. Authority hijacking is fantastic if you're just starting out and depending on your attractive character, which we're going to talk about, I believe, in tomorrow's video or the next. So stay tuned for that. We're talking about the attractive character in your business. So authority hijacking is, you know, this person said X, here's why it matters and what we can learn from it. Depending on your style of business, if you're trying to be a reporter, you're trying to go out and find the answers for people and then bring it to them instead of having all of the answers, that's fantastic. 
And I'll give you one more here, the second stage tip. So if you have an application page, you're essentially teaching them who you are, what you do, and how they can work with you. To fill your application page, you're going to want to use what's called a lead magnet. I'm not going to go into too much depth, but essentially it's a free version of something, right? So my book, The Dog Training Cheat Codes, I might have a free PDF of the first chapter. So someone can go read the chapter. If they like it, they can get the whole book. If they don't like it, then they don't have to pay for the book. But here's the beauty of the second stage tip. The first step is your lead magnet, right? So how to do this thing. Let me, let me go back to this. How to do this thing. Why you need it. Proof of results. But first you need this. And how can I help? So your social media, maybe a YouTube video, maybe an email letter would be how to do this thing. Whatever that thing is. How to get your dog to walk on leash right? Why you need to do it so that your dog can be exercised so that they don't have problems in the house. Proof of results. Here's a dog before and after. But first, before you teach your dog to walk on leash, you have to know how to build engagement with your dog. You need to know timing. You need to know what their preferred reinforcement is, the reward that they like. Here's how I can help you do that. Here's my free PDF guide on building engagement with your dog. Boom. That would be a perfect, perfect marketing message. The second stage tip is absolutely one of my favorites. I use it constantly when it comes to social media. I'll just, you know, I'll write out what the process is for training something a little more complex, teach the second stage of my social media, and say, hey, if you want to learn the first stage, go check out this free resource. That's how you get their email. Then you can market to them through email over and over and over instead of trying to catch their attention again on social media, which is increasingly more difficult. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you tune in for tomorrow's episode where we're talking about the attractive character. I'll see you there.